a March meeting or a reorganization right now, so I open the meeting as the superintendent. And I'm going to jump all the way. We're going to usually have an order of recognizing guests, but I'm going to jump right away to the chair because I like to not be running. The, I want to run the meeting as short as possible. <laughs> um, so I'm going to go right, right away to the board reorganization 2.1, which is elected chairperson. So I would accept nominations for chair for the U32 school board. I will nominate Adrian. I'll second. Are there any other nominations? Seeing none, um, all those in favor of electing Adrian Medina as chair for the U32 board for the ensuing year, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Did you get sworn in? No. You can't vote. So we got to make sure Jonathan can't vote. can't vote right now. He's not sworn in. I'm assuming you he just got from our yes. conversation this morning. Yep. Thank you very much. Sam. Thank you. <laughs> um, I'm going to go back up to welcoming our guests, and then we'll come to this. So welcome to our guests. And are there any agenda revisions? Um, there was an adjusted amendment, amendment, adjusted agenda that came maybe yesterday that added a gun resolution discussion, if you didn't see that. Public comments. Thanks, sir. I don't have a position on the agenda. Um, feels like we're working on like a reality TV show entitled Hemp Wars or something. Well, I was here really just for a status update. Um, we uh, did uh, file an appeal with the uh, superintendent um, concerning the uh, suspension that was done without the notification or the hearing with the uh, parent and the child. Um, so uh, we did get a response from Bill saying that he was going to look into it, um, but that's that's about it. I guess Bill told Carol he's going to look at it tomorrow. Yeah, I want um, to apologize, Dexter. I said to Carol as I walked in that. Yeah, and then we haven't heard anything on any other issues that were left hanging last month and from December's meeting. Um, I think there's, there's still no information received on our end. Basically, what I was yeah. say. I just curious to know if there's any update from the board. We, there were only two days of school, and then we went on vacation. Uh -huh. I don't know if you know that. You were here the 21st. I don't know what that has. We were here the 21st. Yeah. So does that mean something? Well, it means <laughs> I wasn't. I wasn't around. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, there is no further update. We have. Okay. Our so we should letter. just keep doing the same thing. Come back every month and stand up there in public comment and. Uh, uh, yeah, unless, you know, Bill will, Bill will get back to you. Okay, just so I was doing the right thing. Thank you. Um, and I, Dexter, I think the legal letter that we got from a lawyer, I sort of got the feeling last time that we're going to stand by that. That our lawyer looked into all that. She gave us an opinion. And it just, having sort of heard what people said, that's our lawyer, and so we're going to stand by that piece of that. And then the due process piece, you and Bill are going to work out. As long as it's correct, right? Right. Um, right. It's the opinion of your lawyer. Well, there was facts that weren't given to the lawyer. That was the point we raised the last meeting. Yeah. Uh, we specifically were you at the last meeting? No, I was meeting. not. Yeah. Um, I can look at that review, but um, they're not in the minutes either. That the information didn't make the minutes. Yeah, the details didn't make the minutes. Right. So you won't get the minutes. I'll talk to you, but I'm pretty sure that our legal yeah, I'm pretty sure that Heather there looked was, into you all. You have a bill pieces. that's pretty hefty. Did you <laughs> get a let the letter from the lawyer? No. So that's what Krista thinks she mailed. Yeah, right? Krista said that she thought she had mailed that to you. I'll do, a, so, I'll do a return receipt. I will make sure it's a certified letter and resend it. That would be great okay. to do that. Any other comments? Yeah. Um, I have a public comment. I sent you all an email with a letter. Um, will you introduce yourself, please? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm Pam Andrea. I'm the administration with uh, Thank you. I had a student here. Do you want to have a copy? Thank you. Um, 
couple of years ago, and I still live in the district, and I have a daughter that's coming up. And I'm sorry, I don't have another copy for you, but this is a timeline that I can share. Yeah, um, I just, my purpose today is to try and get your feedback from the email that I sent, number one, and be happy to answer any questions regarding Skyler's journey, used to be known as Jack. Um, and also, I had a meeting with um, Lieutenant Governor David Zuckerman, and he suggested that I come to this forum to talk to you about my child and what has happened to him through his education in this district and how we might be able to think outside the box, not just for my child, but for others. And um, I was happy to see in the last minutes that, that Kelly was here. Can I interrupt you for a minute? This is totally your choice as a parent. Yes. You can talk about your child as much as you would like mm -hmm. in open session. The board cannot respond in open session because of uh, student privacy issues. I s this is not just about my student, my child. I just want to, I just want to yeah. caution you as I would any parent. Okay that there are student privacy issues. Mm -hmm. You have choices to make that you can make. Right. This board has to follow the federal guidelines. That's fine. And so I just wanted to advise both you and the board about okay. protecting student rights. Yep, and I appreciate that. And I guess if we could talk in the context of all students, but also recognizing that this happened to one kid and that we don't want it to happen to any other kid. Coming through here. I also want to tell you that it's not on our agenda. So the protocol is that you can give us comments. We may respond briefly, mm -hmm. but then we will either take it into consideration, we'll put it on a further agenda, we'll give you the information that you need. Okay. But when we do public comments, it's not a give and take, a back and forth. Okay. Okay. So we sort of hear what you have to say. We take it in. We can say yes, we can do that, or no, we can't. And here's the reason. But it's not going to be a discussion back and forth tonight. Okay. Um, so I'll, I'll just see where this can go, and if it can go on a future agenda, that would be great. But I don't. Um, my kid is 14. I've been paying taxes in this district since 1999, and I don't want to be shut down on this issue. I asked to come here when he was in seventh grade for help, and um, I think Scott tried to talk to folks, and I wasn't even allowed to come here. So I'm really glad that I'm able to be here and talk in public comments. So this is not just about my kid, and I really need to preface that. This is about kids with emotional disturbance, ADHD, ADD, autism, this is about kids that don't fit into the mold that need a different kind of educational model that was not being served and my kid went through high anxiety and could not ever come back here. So I'm not just talking about my kid, I'm talking about kids with all different kinds of things that may not, because of adverse effect law in the state of Vermont, meet special education criteria, and it's a public comment that as the board for this district that I, I would really like you to read my letter, understand that I'm not, I'm not trying to blame anybody or put this on anybody, and the teachers tried, but it's a fundamental system problem and that this needs to be addressed and fixed and financially, I can't afford what I'm paying to have my, my kid go to school. I can't afford it, what I've been doing. My choice was not to bring him on this campus. That wasn't a choice. I didn't, I didn't have that choice because of the condition of him. And I'm very open to talk about it to anybody. I, if you can't respond, you can't respond. I understand that. But anybody in my shoes would have done the right, same thing. Right. They would have taken their kid out of here and they would have put him somewhere else. And I asked for alternative placement. I was denied through this administration. And I am asking the board to please, please just look at this case and 
please talk to me for future cases coming up for other kids. I have a little seven-year-old. She's perfectly neurotypical. She'll dance through here when she gets here. <laughs> and you'll all love her so much. But I'm heartbroken that every kid is not served in this district. And, and I need the board to pay attention to that. Thank you. I think everybody has, I shouldn't say, I assume people got your email. I assume most people have read your letter and thought about it. From our perspective as a board, I hear you. I understand your frustration. I understand your concern about your child. We care very much about all the children, and we want to do what's best for them. We as a board are tied by state law, federal law, and special ed law. Mm -hmm. And in this case, the special ed procedure went to mediation with the Agency of Education. I can caution you on what you're saying right now in open session. Because you're talking. You okay. Um, <laughs> Sorry. Um, I, have to, I have to protect you. So, yeah, board. okay. Um, <laughs> And we as, we as a board aren't involved in that process. It's a special ed process and the board is not a piece of that. When there are problems with the special ed law and special ed procedures, there's a specific procedure to follow. Mm -hmm. The board is not part of that procedure. And, and so we don't have the power or the statute or anything to interfere with the process of special ed. Is that okay? You're, yeah. <laughs> Yes, I think in general. In general. But yes, in general. But in terms of special ed, my child never even qualified for special ed while he was here, so it wasn't a special ed thing. And just to you as a board, I am assuming you do look over curriculum, and you do. I am hoping. Now this is where I become a little frustrated with the whole system. Where is the oversight of staff? Is that at the board? Is that to stop at the administration? And who, who oversees this side of the table? And who oversees the teachers themselves? Because it's not at the agency of education. They're not doing it either. So where is it? Who do I have to go to? Administration evaluates teachers. Yep. Superintendents evaluate administrators. Um, the principal, mm -hmm. and the principal evaluates the other administrators right. in our building. And, and, then, and the board, actually it's the supervisory union board that hires and fires the superintendent and does his evaluation. So it's, it's not, not it's board? not just U32, it's all, it's Washington Central. It's all the schools all in Washington, schools. Washington Central. So is this not part of the Washington Central supervisory board or not? There are six individual boards for each school in U32. Mm -hmm. Three members from each of those boards form the Washington Central Supervisory Union Board. So I'm just going to go back to David Zuckerman, is our lieutenant governor, and I've been having financial problems trying to keep my kid in school. He suggests let's use the common sense thing with the school board, which is if it costs $18,000, per kid to go here per year, can we plead to the board of it costs so much less for a kid to go somewhere else? Where is that, why, why can't we have that conversation when things like this come up? Because we just want to keep the kids so, if it's not working for that kid, why can't we have that conversation and why, is, why can't the board be part of that solution, because that came right from our lieutenant governor that didn't come from me to come to you. <laughs> so, yeah, we I, can call well, them on the no, phone. No, I, gu I guess wondering. what you're saying yeah. is you want school choice. And in this supervisory union, we don't have school choice. School Kids. choice for children that can't come here, that can't, that just can't. That I'm not asking for school choice. Oh, I want to go there. I want to go there. No, school choice for kids that are like freaking out in their beds and suicidal. And not you, school yep. choice for. And U32 because of school, not because U32 of other things. U32 gets to make that. According to special ed, U32 mm -hmm. makes the decision of where students are placed. Right, and if U32 
is not making that decision per my child's needs, then who oversees that? That's my question, and that's where I'm not getting anywhere. And if you want to ask, the yeah. Board, so can I answer? So yeah. the students are if students needs um, needs are not being met. There are three steps in the escalation. Um, the first one before a student and I'm before a student from special education. There's an EST process, and that EST process is there to see if a student. Um, if a student needs extra support in either emotionally, behaviorally, or academically. If needs are not met through the EST process, then uh, if it's a medical situation, it would go to a 504. If it's a, um, if learning is not happening, and then we need to go through the three gates of, three of the six gates in special education need to be met. Yeah. Evaluate plan. Those are always done with a parent and determined by a team, and the team has the statutory authority of uh, the go saying the goals and the supports that need to be there, not how they're provided. The school district then has the um, and the legal authority to provide the supports in a way that best fits the needs for that student. But it's not with the IEP level. The IEP level focuses on where the student, the goals of the student should be obtained, and the, um, in general, what the support should be. So this and goes back I'm, to me. I, I don't mean to interrupt you, but this I'm very well aware of. That. I've been doing this for <laughs> eight years. Yep. I know all the steps. I've been through all the steps. The point at which we went to mediation and we went to due process because. I wasn't including, I wasn't being recognized in that team decision. My kid wasn't being recognized in that team decision. And that's why I'm here at public comment for a complaint to the board, because that, that didn't happen for my kid. I did EST, I did 504, I had him tested three times. He was found ineligible. The last time he was tested, you'll see on my timeline, he was found eligible if the school he is in now if the supports there were removed. Now Montpelier District says he's eligible. It's a catch-22 bill, and I understand the process, but the, that team thing is so subjective on Kelly, and, on Kelly that I was not even part of that conversation. It was like, no, Pam, we can't put him somewhere else. And I said, I can't get him out of bed. How am I going to get him here? And that did not stop. And I had another, once I got the IEP eligibility, I went to Steve and I had a wonderful meeting with him and Kelly. I still couldn't get him here physically. But the decision was still, we're not going to put him anywhere else. And I can't understand that, because it, then it's on me, the parent, to pay for it. And I'm paying my taxes here. It's not like I want, you know, a, uh, a, a boarding school level education for my kid here and for you to pay for it. I just want him to get out of bed and go to school. That's all I asked for. This is eight years of work. I had, I did that process. I did it at Callis and kindergarten teacher wouldn't even give him an EST at first. So I've done it all, Bill, and I, and I understand how you're telling me the process, but what I'm trying to tell all of you, the process doesn't work for kids like this. It doesn't. It doesn't work. And my, we were at town meeting yesterday um, having lunch, and my, my, he, he was in his old school of Callis Elementary because my daughter goes there, and he's flipping out because he's remembering all these memories of how he wasn't, his needs were not met there either. And um, wanting to spit off all this stuff, I said, you need to stop. People just voted the budget, or they didn't. So let's not talk today. <laughs> but that's what I'm trying to get across. And not just for my child, but for others. The process, if it's a team process decision, the team <laughs> must include the parents. Yeah. Scott? <clears throat> Not about this specific case, but for those of 
us who were here at the last meeting we had, um, I remember we were talking about, uh, and, and this wasn't Pam who said this, but somebody else uh, I had a conversation with, <coughs> that Year 32 um, was a sort of place where the kind of gray area students could fall through cracks, um, whereas compared to Montpelier, where um, it was airtight, I believe was the word that was used. I don't know if anybody remembers this. Uh, um, this, this kind of dovetails, it seems to me, with that. Um, this is just, you know, from what I'm, what I'm picking up, and uh, I, what the, the individual case is an individual case, and I know it has its channels that it has to go through. Um, for us, I think, you know, maybe it's an example of, of something perhaps more systemic that we should at least pay attention to and, um, and you know, consult, obviously, with, um, with our administrators and special educators, um, the people who run it, but just try to get a handle on if, if there are cracks that, that students kind of in the gray area are falling into, how do we, how do we seal them? How do we try to close them and, and work it so that things like this don't happen? I suggest that we go through our agenda and then go into executive session so we can hear all the facts in this case. I think that would be important that would be great. Um, I to do because I think we aren't able to yeah. say what I think needs to be said in order to get all the information out. That's a good idea. But we've got students here, so I, I really want to go through the agenda and then do that at the end. And I might want to warn you that that might need to be a two-step process. But we don't have Kelly Bush here, our special ed director here, that has all the details. I have summaries of what. Do we want to wait and get Kelly here? I think whatever we do should be really, really solid. You're going to have to go through a hearing protocol that you do with, with student issues at some point. I mean, I can advise you and update you from uh, the, the overall point, and the board can take a decision after that. Why don't we just do information gathering in executive session? Okay. 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 Mm -hmm. Is that? I just feel like we can't really yeah. get to the heart of this if we can't do that. Yeah. People okay with that? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. So I'm going to move down to elect a vice chair. Are there any nominations for vice chair of the U32 school board? Nominate Kari. Second. Any other nominations? Is that okay with you? Mm -hmm. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? A clerk. <laughs> Any nominations? Man, I'm going to order the duty. Who's the clerk now? Carl. Carl is the clerk. What usually, what usually happens is when we go into executive session, Lisa has to leave. And so the clerk. There are no notes taken during executive session, but they have to record who, what time you go in, who moves to go in and come out, and then um, usually there's a recommendation after that, and she's gone, and then get the information to her or to Krista. Yeah. 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 Um, and I'm also happy. I don't want to be clerk, but I can do that. No I mean, taking I'm usually, If I'm here more, and I take that. Yeah. So I don't know if you want to keep doing it or someone else wants to try it. Perfect, yeah. I nominate Paul. <laughs> Second? Second. Any other nominations? All those in favor say aye. 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 Thank you, Carl. Establish time and day of our regular monthly meeting. We have established the first Wednesday of the month as our regular meeting, and then the third Wednesday of the month when we need two meetings a month. Romney last year decided to do the third Wednesday of the month. I would like to ask Romney to change theirs, because we have traditionally done that for years and years. 
Um, and it causes Bill a problem because he can't be in two places at once. Um, but the first Wednesday of the month works for people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the problem is then when we have the carousel meetings, those are the fourth Wednesday of the month. Right. So it, kind of the Wednesdays are there. Um, and we only need double meetings, usually November, December, and sometimes January, but not always. And the rest of the months we've been pretty good with one meeting a month. So does that work for people? Yes. Yeah. The first and third, and that works for you guys? I get, I get complex probably two or three meetings with my meeting and board, but no. I mean, my own channel. Um, and it doesn't make sense to do like the first and the second Wednesday of the month. No, I don't think so. It's well, too the, other close. Is, the other Wednesday is Dodi. It, 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 you know, if you were trying to do it, we have. I know you do. Yeah. We have it all. We had it all programmed, and then it got changed. So yes. last year at this time. So it's really going to be trying to figure that out, and maybe a. Maybe yeah. something that we have to bring everyone together and call the chairs together and say, let's figure this out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, someone want to make a motion for the first and third Wednesdays of the month? So, move. Here in a second. Second. Scott. May I interject? Yep. You might want to change that, that your regularly scheduled business meeting will be on the first Wednesday, and then if a second meeting is needed, the third. Got that, Lisa? Yeah. So the regularly scheduled business meeting is the first Wednesday of the month. If we need two business meetings, two meetings, that'll be the third Wednesday of the month. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? All right, carries. Establish a newspaper and location for official postings. The newspaper is the Times Argus, and the official postings are the town clerk's offices. Elementary right. schools, the elementary schools, and U32. No, but not the town clerk office. We send it to them, but you can have more than what you okay. have for official. I would suggest you keep it minimal. Yep. So U32 in the elementary school. So the U32 agenda is posted in all the elementary schools? Yep. Motion for that? So moved. Kari, a second? Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 That motion carries. A representative and an alternate, alternate, sorry, to the Washington Central Supervisory Union Executive Committee. Kari, do you want to continue to do that? Yeah, I'm willing to. And I'm willing to be the alternate. That is something I can do unless someone else is dying to do that. Mm -hmm. I think that motion. <laughs> <laughs> Carl, in a second? Uh, I'll second. Scott? Yeah. <laughs> All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Lisa, are you getting all this? Yes. Okay. Um, three voting members to the Supervisory Union Board. So Kari and I would be two. And who would stop? I'm, I'm the other one. You're the other one. Um, and that just comes when the Supervisory Union has a vote. There are only three of us that are allowed to vote according to the bylaws right now. Yeah. I'm not going to Carl as the third. Okay, so Kari, three. Adrian and Carl. Second for that? Second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Mm -hmm. aye. Um, executive committee member and alternate must be voting members. I didn't see that. Okay. Um, we also have Washington Central committees. There's negotiations, there's policy, there's transportation, there's labor management. Is no. there labor management? No. no. That needs to be crossed off. Okay. That was, I mean, Chris and I talked about that this afternoon. <clears throat> I apologize for not catching that. Yeah. Um, um, and you'll see school quality was put on there. One of the things I haven't had a chance to work with the executive committee on this yet, but that's something that U32 has hosted, but I think it really should go to the SU board. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. That's fine. That's fine. That's been our goal. Mm -hmm. I know it's been your goal, and so you may need to advocate for that. <laughs> okay. You don't know that other schools. Well, we have representatives from some of the schools. Most of them. Yeah. Most of them. All. We do. We've worked on that. Um, and school tar start, the start time. So negotiations, is that something that's going to be happening this year? It will be this fall. In the fall. Policy meets once a month Sorry. on Mondays. The next meeting is next Monday. 
Yes, which so, will be posted tomorrow. It will be okay. okay. So is it is it usually like the second or third Monday? It's usually the second Monday from five five four thirty to five thirty. Four thirty to five thirty. Um, transportation is that something that's going to be active this year? No, it, we're in the we'll be in the third, second or third year of the contract. So do we need to actually appoint somebody? Or we not? should appoint somebody in case we have some transportation issues. I don't know if we'll get there with start time or not. Okay. And right. school quality tends to meet the on uh, Monday. Well, we just changed it. Actually. Oh, to Thursday, so right? Second Thursday. <clears throat> And the school start time, do you have a set time that you're meeting? We don't, but we do have our meetings all mapped out. Okay, and we actually, and you and Scott are doing that already, right? Yeah, yeah, okay. Um, so negotiations has been Carl. He's done a great job. Are you willing to continue? I am willing to continue unless somebody's really interested in the process and wants to learn it. I know Scott's doing the start time at this point, so. Yeah, but I, it's a great process. I love it. And were you the alternate yeah. for that? I may have been. I'm happy to continue to be. Yeah. So I'm going to do this all at once. Can you do that, Lisa? Yeah. So I'm going to put Carl and Scott as an alternate, even though it doesn't. Oh, it does say an alternate for each one. OK. Policy committee, are you willing to continue? Mm -hmm. That's something you can get to? Yes. And an alternate? I could be the alternate for that, <clears throat> if you just let me know. So Jonathan and Adrian. Transportation. I'll do that. Thank you, Karen. <laughs> you sure. I was oh, listening. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Get her name right on I, I, I don't know. Do we need an alternate for that one? I'm, I'm happy to find OK, yes. got it. <laughs> <laughs> um, School quality, Kari? Yeah. May you continue? And I'm happy to continue on that. Do we want two? I mean, it's different now. It's going to be Washington Central. I, 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 I think you're fine just saying the two. That's fine. Okay. Then let's, does somebody else want to do school what? start? So I'm uh, sorry. Our, do school quality? All of these are full WCSU committees, so school quality used to be a U32 committee. Right, and that's why we have two of us. That's why the thing I had a chance to talk to Kari about it. He's, uh, well, I'm, sorry, I'm full with it, but we'll see if the rest of the. Well, we're going to see if we can get the rest okay. of the SU to be. It really should be with all the monitoring work and the goals that we talked about as SU. It does goals. make sense. That really Absolutely. And we have had members from other yeah. boards for quite a while now. Yeah. This might be a way to get more. Yeah. And then school start school start time, sorry, is Karen and Scott. Is that an alternate or is that both of them together, like on the school? They're both on that. On okay. They were yeah. 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 Did you get all the stuff? Yeah. So is there a motion for the Washington Central Committee meetings? As stated here, Kari, and a second? Second. Scott, any discussion over that? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Um, just, uh, uh, sorry, sorry. It's okay. And as usual, my big hearers are just grinding away much too slowly. But, um, George, is there anything that you want to do? Am I? I was kind of. Uh, Thinking about school quality. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> That'd be a good one for that. Yeah, um, that was my interest. Mm. Um, kind of interested in the uh, the truant officer position too. Good personality fit. Just because I mean, we could put you on the school quality committee. Why don't we? But why don't you be the alternate and come tomorrow? Are you free tomorrow? I am. Because I can't yeah. come tomorrow. Yeah. And you can check it out. Yeah. Yeah. So we're, we're going to meet 4 30 at the Central SU Central. Unless I don't yeah. have school, and then I can come. No. Maybe <laughs> not. I know. We'll come anyway. No call yet. Yeah. We'll orient you. No call yet. <laughs> the boss is here. My call's coming at a different time than your guys' calls come. Easy, True. Easy, easy. <laughs> um, I get your call too, though. You do. <laughs> <laughs> Um, a representative to the Central Vermont Career Center Regional Advisory Board. So this is problematic. They yeah. meet on Tuesdays at 4.30. Yeah. 
No, four, four o'clock. Four. four. At four. Four, four thirty is more doable. Yeah. Tuesdays at four o'clock. Tuesdays at four, and it's what the every the first Tuesday or something. Every other first month. First Tuesday every other month. Every yeah. other month. Yeah. Um, and. Karen can't really do it. George can't really do it. I can't do Tuesdays because I have staff meeting. I can't. There's a few superintendents. There's standing positions like I'm on it and I can't make it in. It's one of the things that a couple of the superintendents have been trying to work with John Pandolf on. It's like we've got changes. Okay. Yeah, there was a there was circulating email about changing it and a lot of it. And we chimed in. Yeah. And we were like, oh. I didn't even see that one. <laughs> was it the, it was probably like August or September. It was 4.30 or 5. It would give us some time. To yeah, I could get there. Get there. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Do you guys want to would, stay on it? I would be willing to do it again, um, and even weren't you the primary? Yep. Okay, and even be the primary, just because it looks like my schedule is going to shift to where my Tuesday schedule um, will be more flexible. So if it didn't get changed, I might be able to make it. Yeah. So I'd be willing. To do okay. That. And then George, you could be the alternate, although it doesn't seem like it ever works. Not at that time. Yeah. Not at four o'clock. Is there somebody that Absolutely could, possible. as an alternate, make it at four that is interested? I can't do four. I can't do four. That's four. Yeah. Okay. So we'll leave it at that and suggest that you really push them. Because Emily Goya was able to get there, and she got a lot of good information. Mm -hmm. She felt like it was very worthwhile and, you know, had her input into those meetings. 2.10 is to appoint a truant officer, and usually that's someone from the school. Eric Bennett. And she would give it to him again? Please. <laughs> so is Bigger, there, meaner. Is there a motion? <laughs> 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 George. So, sorry, George. And then had even less hair. So. <laughs> so Carl made a motion to second. Second. Scott, any discussion? <coughs> All those in favor say aye. 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 That one carries. Um, U32 boards, we, um, committee, sorry, we have finance and we have facilities and capital budget, which I thought we actually put into one. You did, sorry. We it's it's that. one. It's one committee. So finance cool. slash facilities, capital budget. That has been Kari and Scott and Karen. Yeah. And we meet maybe three times a year in the budget process. So somewhere along in October, right, or early November. November, November. Should we start in October? October. Yeah. October, yeah. November, so. December, maybe. Is that something you'd be interested in? Yeah. The usually morning. in the morning. It's a Tuesday morning, usually. What's that? As soon as I can get here from Elmore, which is usually like 8.15-ish. Yeah, 8.30 has been our yeah. start time. That that doesn't work. That's what time we're getting on the bus. You did. One Friday meeting. <laughs> Fridays are better. <laughs> it doesn't really bother me too much as long as it's more. So, do the three of you want to continue? Um, I would like to, if I may. Karen? Yeah, yeah. all right. <coughs> George is at nine. Nine would work. I don't know. Huh? We can't have four, though, right? Because then we have a quorum. Then you have a quorum of the board. Oh, well, you're warning subcommittees anyway, so it doesn't. Oh. Yeah, I'd say let's go for four then. Mm. I, this is a big, this is a really important yeah, one. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. So and Karen, George, Scott, and, and Kari, right, and out of four, hopefully we'll get three. Kari, are you good with nine? Yeah, yeah. okay. Eight, thirty, and nine are equally awful. <laughs> <laughs> Basically going to work late. <laughs> Whichever. A motion for those I'll four? A motion. Carl, and a second? Second. Scott? All those in favor say aye. 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 Let me write this one down. Yeah. Okay. I think we got them all. So was finance and facilities and capital budget, are they the same? It's one. Yes, it's, it's one one now one. It's one committee. I should have caught that when I. No, wait, I, I know. I, was on I had a conversation of how this happened. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And I'm the one to blame. It's all right. Okay. Everybody set? Yeah. Everybody happy? Yeah. Do you guys want to do your report first? Sure. sure. Yeah. Okay. We're going to skip down to reports to the board student, 5.2.
Okay. Um, so this is very, like in the preliminary stages, but Jody, you know about this, the restorative panel thing. Um, so basically we're trying to get together um, this restorative panel of students, and the idea is that, like, we don't know the logistics of it yet, really, um, but that there would be some sort of, like, more restorative practice when it comes to, um, like, punishments for students, I guess, um, which I think is a really interesting idea. We're still definitely trying to work it out, um, but we just wanted to let you know that that's something that's happening and that students especially are interested in sort of, like, how and why kids who break the school policies are punished and like how to be more effective in that punishment, I guess. Um, so that's just something that we're trying to get going. Um, who's, who's we? Um, so it's, well, actually, there are only like two students on it right now, right? Um, and three, then, one didn't make it to that last meeting. OK, so there's three of us. Um, but it's sort of Jody and Scott Harris are in charge of it. So we're trying to get that going. And who else besides you? Um, two other, wait, Nora, right? Mm -hmm. Um, this sophomore, Nora Dillon, me, and then another, um, junior, Gus Heinz. So, mm -hmm. we're trying to get that going and trying to get more students on it because I think it's a pretty good idea, so. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Great. Um, and in other news, um, <laughs> so we just came back from our break. The Nordic ski teams just finished states where we're being, <laughs> were they runners up? Were yeah, both teams so. or just, yeah. yeah, both teams were runner up. So that's good. Um, basketball, both teams are in playoffs right now, um, but they, the games have been postponed because of the snow. Um, and yeah, the hockey teams are out according to Lucy's on that. Oh, uh, next week is Teen Health Week, which has been organized by Megan. Megan Fowley. <laughs> he told me to write. Um, and that's going to focus, I, there's a couple different themes. I think uh, there's a day focusing on environmental health, um, physical health, mental, mental health, um, and there's gonna, yeah, and substance abuse. Um, and there's going to be different presenters. I know that some of the anatomy and physiology classes, the students will be presenting about different things that they've studied. I think mostly focused on toxicology. Um, so they'll be contributing to the substance abuse discussions. Um, and that's a new thing this year. We haven't had a Teen Health Week before. So that'll be. And Shannon, who's Megan? A Megan student? is the health teacher. Thank you. Sorry. <laughs> don't have kids here anymore. <laughs> and then um, next week on Wednesday, there is a national um, walkout planned. And I know that the U32 Social Justice Group is planning and hoping to get students involved with that. So that's definitely something that's on our radar and something that's coming up. Um, may I just ask, are you aware of this resolution that's on our agenda for today? I heard about it, but I'm not yeah, sure. Can you, can you tell us more about it? Why don't we do that right after you guys do the report? That's the end yeah. of our report. Does that work? <laughs> not much has happened since we just got back from work. Yeah. But I would like to note, today marks 100 days until graduation. So <laughs> 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 Who's counting? <laughs> You're talking about days, yeah, not school days. days. Not real school Saturdays, school Sundays. Days. Days. Yeah. <laughs> Um, this is totally off the subject. Do you know what you're doing next year? I am still hearing back from colleges. I've heard back from a couple, but still, it's a, it's a tense time for the I know, class. I know. <laughs> so we'll snag you in April, and maybe you'll know more. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Hopefully. <laughs> we got our fingers crossed for you. Do you have a sense of um, how students are feeling about the planned walkout? Um, students, I think a lot of students are planning, it's mixed. There is a lot of students who are planning to participate and are excited about it. There are a few students, I would say, that are not really into it. And then I've talked to a couple teachers about it, too, and they're, you know, they're mixed about it because they want to support their students in this, but they also can't support their students in cutting class. You know, it's, so it's a, it's, it really is mixed across the board, I would say. It was also interesting because last week at student council, um, our faculty advisor brought up the point that some kids might take it the wrong way 
because it's a the thing about gun laws, and they might think like, oh, this just means like people don't want guns, and they're trying to take our guns away. Mm -hmm. But our teacher brought up that like there should be an option for kids who don't want to participate. Um, so like, it, I think it's definitely mixed. Like some kids are pretty like not having it, <laughs> but most of them I think are in support of it and probably will participate in it. And so it's the social social justice group that's organizing. Yeah, yeah, but it's a of, nationwide thing. Right, no, I get that. But yeah, our social justice group is taking it on here to organize it. Because there must be some sort of statement or yeah. something that you're walking out for. Yeah, there's like a big, long statement, but basically it's about like, we deserve to feel safe at school. This is us sort of doing what we can to voice how we feel about what's happening. Right, and I don't think, I don't think it references any specific, you know, pushes for different gun laws or things like that. I know a lot of students are participating in it just to stand in solidarity with the students in Parkland, so. There was a really good piece on BPR today. About um, that. About that, mm -hmm. yeah. Really good piece. I suggest people mm -hmm. take a listen tonight when you go home. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So why don't we <laughs> move into, where is it on here, 4.3 in is a resolution in support of taking action for better regulatory something, some, that word is wrong, access to firearms. Um, we received an email right before vacation from an East Montpelier resident who said that Montpelier was taking up a resolution and would we be willing to do that? And then Kari today gave us a copy of the resolution that the East Montpelier Board, I have copies for everybody. Um, they're similar, but they aren't exactly the same. And I figured this would be a starting point for a discussion. And the idea is that we send something to the legislature or to the governor saying, if, if we want to, that this is what we support or this is what we're saying. And it's, it's discussion, and then we can decide we want to do something or we don't want to do something. We can use similar language. We can write our own language. But these are starting points for um, where we are. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, five, eight, nine. And typically, resolutions are non-binding anyway. So they're essentially symbolic statements, more what, or less. What would it mean to be binding but, in this case? Well, I mean, a, a binding would be, you know, like a contract. Two parties agreeing to the terms of a contract. Right. They would be bound by the terms of So this is, you know, resolutions at the State House. Today is, you know, um, Blue Spruce Day, mm -hmm. and they pass a resolution. Mm -hmm. They make a statement. That's great. And then, but not in any way to try to throw any water on this at all, because I think it's a great idea. I'm just. I think it's important to say that for what it's worth. We're, yeah. we're expressing our opinion. Right. Yes. That, that's how I advise the East Montpelier Board. Right. Um, a little bit from afar last Saturday was uh, because some some past people wanted to speak to it and they should be able to speak to it. But a resolution is the, the opinion or the statement from the board. It's not from the community, it's not from anyone else, it's really just from the board. You're taking a position. You might even take it as high as you're taking a position as a board. But at least a statement or anything. And so one of the big differences is the East Montpelier Board um, added a sentence that said, we do not support arming our teachers with guns as a measure to increase safety in our schools. It's that fourth little paragraph now. And that is not in the um, Montpelier one. So I'll kick it off. I, I don't recall us doing a lot of things like this, resolutions or advocating for legislation, specific, specific legislation. And personally, I think we should be very conservative about that because it's not necessarily what we do. But to me, this is a kind of a no-brainer because of, of the safety issue. And I also think that we should recognize that we're in a unique moment right now where there actually is, appear to be some momentum, and if we could help um, take advantage of this opportunity, then I think we should. Um, the day that I heard about Montpelier's passage of the resolution, I emailed Adrienne and told her I'd be happy to, that I'd be in favor of doing, jumping on board and joining that push. 
I mean, essentially, this this reflects my own personal um, sense of things. My one question is whether there might be some possibility in, in elementary schools. It doesn't make sense to, you know, to work with students or to coordinate with students on a statement of this of this type. Um, doesn't make as much sense, but in in high school, I think um, there's a level of sophistication and awareness that <clears throat> I, I, some, if there's some way to have a student voice that's connected, yeah. Um, student so, council? Uh, or, yeah, um, if, if I, I don't know what the appropriate vehicle would be, whether it's a joint resolution or um, or something that is done kind of in in concert, but for the students to be able to be somehow involved in in, um, in an action of this sort, um, I, I would find that a good thing. Council meets tomorrow morning. Right? I don't even know anymore. Hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> To be there. Can I offer something, Scott? Yeah. To, to that discussion, I think that one of the things that I've been trying to be very careful of is that um, administration does not necessarily hold a, a view on all of this, so that we do want safe schools, but in terms of legislation and all of that, right. that um, you know, we're supporting our students in um, the, the walkout. Um, and being active in their local and global communities, being engaged citizens, all of these things that are in our, our very own vision statement are transferable skills. Um, and I don't want to impose my view on what the kids are putting together. And so um, I think that they're moving forward pretty, pretty well and trying to figure out what they want to say and what the social justice group wants and, and all of that. And so, this is just my recommendation, mm -hmm. um, is that the board should come up with its own statement mm -hmm. and let the students continue to do what they're doing, as opposed to trying to... Trying to meld them together? As, as opposed to trying to meld them together, and at the risk of sounding a little bit rude in this, is that not imposing the adults' view for Sure. Kids, no, right? that, that is definitely... Is that let them, let them craft and do their own message, and that we can craft and do our, our message as well, but not try... I think that anything we try to do as adults right now that looks like it may be superseding what the students are trying to do, or that they might be joining with us, dilutes their message a little bit. And so I'm, I'm kind of letting them do their thing and allowing their, their voice to be their voice. And then I can, whatever my voice is, I'm going to keep it separate from them. Yeah, I think that's, that's an excellent point. And in fact, what, I, I mean, perhaps we might want to include um, some language on our uh, recognizing the, the, the student activism that that's going into this issue, um, recognizing and honoring um, that effort, um, and then letting them do their thing. Yeah. This is what the VPR piece was about. Um, was about not taking the voice from the solidarity, um, you know, that these students have, have grown um, <coughs> organically. Um, and they came out and said, you know, they don't want to be gathered in a room and, and, and spoken to. <clears throat> they want to do it on their own and have that voice. And I mean, that's why I'm saying just when you go home tonight, listen to that. It, it was a really good piece. Yeah. yeah, I think that says it better than I just did. So. Yeah. <laughs> you said it pretty well, too. Yeah, okay. <laughs> New territory. <laughs> So how are people feeling? Do we want to I would use the same one using this? The East Montpelier one, the Montpelier one, our I, own? I like the East Montpelier one because I absolutely see no reason that we would have or encourage our teachers to be off. I see that more as a risk, as a threat, as I'm an armed teacher and I'm very well versed in it. If I had a, an extremely upset student who felt desperate enough to do something, they could get that weapon away from me. Mm -hmm. And then I have brought the weapon into the school. Mm -hmm. 
So people okay with East Montpelier's? Um, what, maybe just some uh, what Kare would refer to as wordsmithing. Do you have quick you suggestions? I don't want to wordsmithing. Word uh, do like <laughs> three minutes of wordsmithing. Um, can I? Uh, is it possible for us to move to something else that? may not necessarily require 100% attention on my part. <laughs> <laughs> yes, absolutely, because we're going to vote on it in the action agenda, so we can wait. Do you guys want to comment at all before we move on? I think that there would definitely be a lot of student interest in writing something like this, but I think my only thing is that, sort of like what Steven said about like representing the school, is that we live in a really unique community where people are pretty divided on this issue. And I think that there are a lot of kids in our school who might have a problem with this. So like, I think it's great if like a group of students wants to write something like this, but I think that it, it, doesn't, it really doesn't reflect the voice of all the students, because I think some people would have a major problem with it. I personally agree with everything on here, but I'm not the whole student. Body. This is what I mean by sophisticated. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, very nice to see. Yeah, so yeah, I think this one should be the board one, and then the students will. I yeah, support. Them. <clears throat> Great. 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 So I'm gonna let you know. <laughs> um, and I'm gonna go back to the agenda, to the consent agenda. You guys are welcome to stay, or if you need to go, you can go. Okay. We really appreciate your input. Thank you very much. Um, a motion to approve the minutes of February 14th and February 21st. Mm -hmm. Sorry, and a second. Second. <coughs> over there. Any comments or changes? Just a couple of things. Go ahead. Um, on uh, on one point three, this this is probably words. Is this thing. February twenty first or February fourteenth? Um, sorry, it, uh, it's the paragraph. Was it Kayla Woodman? No, it was. It was. Oh, right, right here. It was right here. So February fourteenth, Lisa. Yeah, okay. so on line one, two, three, four, five, six of one point three. Um, instead of he also took grievance. Maybe he also took issue with the suspensions. Yeah. Um, and then in paragraph. 2.2, um, paragraph 1, 2, 3, 4. In addition to spelling Adrian's name with an E instead of an A. A instead of an A, yeah. Um, Sorry. It wasn't you, it was somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> um, I just like, a, uh, I think it would be good to insert a sentence, maybe. Um, as a second or last sentence of that paragraph and say um, either the board or, or just Scott Thompson, I don't know if, if others joined in this, thanked the legislators for their letter to the agency and state board of education supporting the WCSU boards apostrophe, Act 46 proposal. Is that? Did you get that? So to the, to the agency of Ed and the board of Ed, so there's two different things. Yeah. Um, it was a single letter, but went to both. Okay, so there's the, the state of board and, and, and the agency. Okay. Yeah. The agency of Ed are the employers. The employee, the people that work for the state, the state board is appointed. You got it? Yes. Thank you. Thanks. So, anything so, else? So, the board or Scott? Does it say? The board thanked them? I, no, you did. I, I guess I, I said it. I don't know if anybody sort of joined a chorus, but I, I, I don't remember. But you can put it, me. 
I don't think anybody will get angry at me for it. <laughs> Anything else? If you go to um, February 21st, 5.3, Carl's last name is just spelled wrong. It's a Y on there. Sorry, 5.3. Yeah. It says Wikipedia oh. with a Y. Okay. And that was all I had. Anything else? Um, looks like on the 21st that I'm not present. Oh, there I am down the block. Never mind. Oh. It's where just, you, I wasn't there for the hearing. I got where it. you took the Y out of my name in 5.3, mm -hmm. it then lists who I nominated, Matthew DeGroote, School Thompson. Oh, yeah. Good catch. Good catch there. Scott Thompson. <laughs> 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 I'm pretty sure Scott that I nominated. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. 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 That's your new nickname. It's a good name. It's good. It's got schooly time. What else that? All those in favor say aye. 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 And opposed? That motion carries. Um, discussion. Supervisory union board goals. We looked at those last, it was the 21st after the um, full board meeting, and just wanted to either solidify that we agree with them or suggest changes or consolidation or focus on them. And they are on page, page nine. nine of our packet. And we had some discussion about the engaging the community and what that would look like. Um, anybody had any more thoughts? Board governance, engaging the community's implementation plan. People good with those? The only thing I would get is by what's the second bullet, which is really the first step in that part. It's the engagement comes after you. you there's some work the boards need to do before you go into engagement. Well, I think um, <coughs> Stephen Look's vision was to get some training. That's what he well, that, that, That's part of it. There's also some auditing of what a communication system looks like and clear, clarity, more clarity about roles. Scott and I were having a discussion about that yesterday. Yeah. yeah, we talked about that at this meeting a little bit. What does it look like? What are we trying to do? So the other um, activity that's not on here is the school start time. But that's kind of a given. Right. It should be recognized as a, as a, as yeah. a goal. Yeah, as something that they're working on. And a certain amount of engagement. Yeah. Yeah. And will you just remind us when the night is of that the March 26th. March 26th. And it's here? Yes, from 6 to 8 p.m. And there we will have another one. On the 11th. On the 11th of April. I'll bring birthday cake. Is it your birthday? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, so we have a, a whole timeline in our minutes. Um, so we'll do our first forum and then take what we gather from that and have it at the second forum. And then take from that, develop a survey that we can send out through as many channels as possible to get community engagement that way. And then bring the survey, close the survey, and then present to the full board at the beginning of June with what we have gathered and think is feasible. Okay. So are people okay with these goals? Yes. Okay. So you can okay, take right. that back to the executive committee. Oh, yeah. I mean, I think they're going to have some kind of process to maybe win this down or it's a lot. prioritize. Yeah. But it's certainly a good starting point. Yeah. And then looking at our goals, um, and I realize I've been a little remiss looking at ours and thinking about them. <clears throat> and they are on page 13. Thank you. 
our goals. See, we did this at the retreat last year. Yeah, was we updated and revised. Or May? It was, and yeah. you and I had talked over a vacation via email, and I thought that thinking about the supervisory union goals was good to look at the U32 goals at the same time, and to say, how to, because one of the things that's referenced in our alternative governance proposal is more is a better alignment of the work between the boards, mm -hmm. and that that's a real opportunity. And um, that work, and so in that work, one of the things I'm trying to facilitate is a way of saying, um, and this is something that we've got to think about at the executive committee level is to say, how do we align this better? And that's what's called for in some of the four goals. A lot of what spread this draft that I recommended to the executive committee was off of, frankly, an audit of the alternative plans, the efficiency study, some other work and pieces we need to do. So um, I was saying to Adrian last week, I thought it would be good to right now to have a little discussion about kind of a progress monitoring check-in where do you feel as board members are involved with the U32 board that you established last night? I mean, if you look at the U32 school board goals, and I read through it, none of it doesn't apply or couldn't apply to the entire WCSU. They're very broad, and they really are. So if we needed something that's more narrow, it would be just a subset of these, and it'd be more to be tactical. Like what we need to do to achieve these, not necessarily changing them. Yeah, the big categories align really well. The first yeah. one is governance, the second one is a form of engagement, and the third and fourth are about the plan. Right, the, the sort of one, two, three. Yeah. yeah. So, and then looking at the specifics of what we said we'd do, I feel really good about parts of it and other things, you know. Well, that's what I was just writing myself a note to look at our goal board calendar and see where we are because I have not done that for the last couple months. But honestly, we're going to probably update this in a couple months. We are, yeah. yeah. And that's what I was trying to think. I think it's usually May. Usually at the retreat, we have a discussion. Yeah, and then but in June, May. you bring back a little rough draft, and usually August, it's, it's kind of fun. Yeah. Um, so let me, I'm going to go back and look at our board calendar and see if there are things we need to kind of put in in the next couple meetings to get to some of these bullets okay. that we maybe haven't done. I just wrote myself a note to do that. Um, and you're right, though, they certainly align pretty well, considering we didn't know what those were. <laughs> we did our goals. Um, oops, wrong agenda. And we just did the resolution. Uh, do you have some? I think so. Is anything you want to share? Yeah, John's been helping me. Thank you, John. <laughs> Go ahead. You can share. Oh, okay. Um, you want me to read the whole thing, or just the parts that are changed? Just the parts that are changed. Okay. First paragraph. The board of directors of U32 Middle and High School finds that it is our paramount responsibility to ensure a safe learning environment, et cetera. Um, one, two, three, four, five. Down to paragraph five. We, the board of U32 Middle and High School, resolve that, and then delete path, uh, delete must, must, sorry, and just leave it as a subjunctive. And at the same time, after Governor Scott in the last line, Delete must again. Um, and then uh, add below the what is at present the last paragraph on what you have. Add a new paragraph. We recognize and honor the activism of our students, the healthy diversity of opinion among them, and the civility of their debates. Read that again. We recognize and honor the activism of our students, the healthy diversity of opinion among them, and the civility of their debates. Is that? Yeah. I can have that get it typed. 
Oh, you'll take it. Great. Oh, yeah. yeah. Ah, I love it. Because you, to, before you take that in your action, or um, actually, I would ask in your action that you direct. Uh, you don't have to direct me, but I would be willing to do it for the board to direct me on how to communicate this and to whom. Hmm. Or you can have in your discussion of this item, and I'll assume that it, that's safe. Please just refer to the discussion, but as a board how you want that done. Mm -hmm. because you, because let's, let's talk about it right now. <clears throat> well, I mean, I've got just, just an initial thought, which would be our, our respective representatives, senators, and then committee chairs that are hearing these, considering these bills. Yeah. And even, I mean, the it's governor not, perhaps yep. too, yeah, but I mean, too. you know, the, I think the letter ought to go certainly to the people that are active in the actual Basically, I might, my letter would be somewhat factual to say the if I were to be the one drafting it to, I've been asked by the board following the resolution to make sure that this resolution is communicated to you, you know, the under, you know, yeah. obviously okay. personal as a teach person, say please communicate this to, we want to communicate this to you, and if it's to one of the committees, to the committee members. Yeah. I would like it to go to Governor Scott, too. Yeah. I think it's important. Mm -hmm. For him to hear, also. Yeah, but I'm more than willing to do that one. Did that give you yeah. enough information? Um, so I just want to repeat what I heard to make sure I've got clarity. Yeah. Um, I heard the governor. I heard our elected senators and representatives that uh, represent the communities of U32. I didn't hear it that way, but that's why I interpreted yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, I heard the chairs of the Probably the judiciary committees. I'm kind of looking at Jonathan because you live a little bit in this world, but I think that's where the, these bills are, are up in the judiciary. Care. So when I've heard the House and Senate judiciary committees are the ones leading. This yeah, I, I think I think so. There may be Would some you like House and Senate Ed. There may be some other committees. Yeah, I mean, that's you, a, yes, yeah. 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 That's why I said House, House yeah. and Senate. Yeah, Ed. that's great. Okay, Thanks. can I add those. Yep. Mm -hmm. I hope you're getting this for me, Lisa. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone else? No, I think that's great. I think that's great too. Thank you. Um, why don't we take a motion? We'll just do this right now. It's six point four. So, is there a motion to adopt this resolution as written and present it to the people that we just oh, talked about? Motion. Carl, and a second. A second. Scott, any more discussion about that? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. That motion carries. <coughs> Thank you very much. Would you like any, the other thing I didn't ask you is, you, would you like any other statement? I just heard the officials, and that's fine with me. The other reason I ask is that sometimes some boards want to just present it in the media. Yeah, I'm, I'm not pushing you, I'm not pushing you there. I just yeah. want to be clear. <laughs> Obviously, this is an open meeting, and Dave does watch the videos. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And you may say that's fine to let it go that way. I'm not trying to push you in one way or Yeah, uh, we're not. We're not Doing it to grandstand. Right. Okay. Yeah. I think that's Thank fine. You. Yeah. yeah. Just, just check with you. Yep. Like, Thank you very okay. much. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Where are we here? Reports to the board. Central Vermont Career Center. Would it be appropriate though to distribute it to all the administration staff, teachers at U32? That we did. That this is what their board. It's makes. in your minutes as well. So yeah. Okay. But. If, if, you like, was to, do, if, if I was a teacher, would I read our minutes? <coughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's a really good question. I uh, know. They probably don't even know where to find uh, it. Uh, <laughs> so, I will tell you because I do have these conversations. The associations do read our minutes. Okay. They do let the teachers know when there's something in there that needs to be <coughs> like in their newsletter. Okay. Can, can I just ask something about the Career Center? I've been hearing these reports yeah. all these years. But this actually came up in, the, in town meeting yesterday. Mm -hmm. Parent was very concerned that the career center does not meet the needs of his child and potentially many other children because he views it as not a true VOTEC program. Um, the parent views it, yes. or the kid does. The parent. Okay. Yeah. As opposed to what exists in Randolph as a true VOTEC, I, I have no idea. Um, but but I, when I questioned him about it, he said that the career center is really designed for kids that are on track to go to college. And that doesn't his his kid does not fit that mold, and right. it does not work for him. He's very he praised 
um, so, uh, whatever program, I'm not sure if it's branching out or some, some alternative pathway that the child is in, but he feels strongly that E32 should have a true VOTEC option. That. So is that an accurate representation of the career center? Uh, so I would say that the two career centers that you just mentioned are different in some ways, but that they both represent a model of vocational tech that is seen throughout our country. Um, so I, I would say that our Central Vermont Career Center is a vote tech program. I would say that Randolph is a VOTEC program. I would say that they don't look the same in some of the ways that they approach um, the way that they work with both the kids, the community, and businesses. And the time frame. And the time frame. I would say that the time frame is probably one of the bigger issues that we deal with. So it starts earlier at Randolph? So it continues at Two Randolph. Two years okay. at Randolph. It's only one at CBCC oh, okay. currently. Yeah. Kids can only go for one year. They can go for multiple years, but not within the same career, uh, the same tech path. Um, so you could attend, yeah, you could attend in your junior year. You can actually attend in your sophomore year. There's a pre-tech program. Um, and then there, um, and we have a few students who attend that. Then there's a, a junior year is when a lot of our kids go. If they choose to go back their senior year, that um, they can't do the same program that they just did. And there's not really an extension two-year program for most. The only true two-year program at, um, at the SEECC is the cosmetology program. And um, we see a couple of students go into that, but many of the programs are not. A few of our students co-op out for their senior year but, if they have excelled and gotten a placement. Yeah. And there's... I mean, the different, I can say this, I've been part of three, or actually, t in my professional work, I've been part of three different vocational centers, and all of them are very different. Mm -hmm. They're all, exactly what Stephen said, they all meet a vocational model, but there's not the same model. And so what might meet one student's needs at one place may not at another. Okay. Um, it's one of... It's just one of the pieces of the system. Tell him to read the January newsletter where there are options on how he might attend other tech centers. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Student report we did administration. So I want to first start off by thanking all of you. I sent an email last night, but also today to the Washington Central Community. So if you saw your E32 email, um, I want to thank your leadership <laughs> and and work on the budget and uh, well, the community. So thank you for everything that's happened. Very nice to meet this morning again. As we were exchanging email back and forth, but uh, uh, we had tremendous support across Washington Central and all five towns. Um, it just continues to amaze me the amount of support that we have in our communities. So, I appreciate it. Thank you for your leadership on that. Besides that, we I'll let my two colleagues go. There hasn't been a lot in three days of school. <laughs> yeah. Um, it felt like more than that. But, um, so I, I was um, asked to, or we, we had a program of studies. I have a copy of it for each of you to see. I just wanted to point out a couple of things that, that you will see over the next few years as we change our program of studies. And that's if you look, when you, when you lots of stuff in it, but when you look at specific courses, um, now, within the program of studies, at the very end of that, um, the write-up on the course, and it doesn't matter which one you pick, um, you will see SLOs, and there's a little dash, and it tells you, and it may, it's very succinct in the way that it's written, but it um, has transferable skills that are led by TS, or it has an L for literacy, um, the math content and practices, MCP, um, we've thrown those in there um, to start getting a better idea of which SLOs are met by which courses. Um, now, some courses may touch on more than those, but those are the dominant ones, the, 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 the bigger ones. And so, so now as students start to choose their courses, they can start to look at where might I need additional work on a particular 
uh, learning outcome because they may not be proficient in it yet. And so they can start to see, oh, you know, um, well, I'm trying to think of one of the science standards. If we're around um, sustainability, that's the one. If sustainability is an area that in their freshman year or their sophomore year that they didn't necessarily meet that proficiency, <coughs> they would be looking at courses in science that would have that particular um, SLO, and I can tell you that that would be like horticulture or forest ecology, where those where that topic is hit as a major subject matter, and it would give the kids another opportunity to uh, to meet that uh, standard. <coughs> that's the route that they choose to go, and so uh, so that's that's something that's new to the program of studies. And when you look at those, we we think that uh, the shorthand that's in there is a little bit tough to read. So we've got to get a better guide to uh, that was just our quick and dirty this year getting it in there so everybody could see it but we know that this is going to be revised again to really try to show the whole totality of proficiency based systems you have to remember our program of studies is still living in two worlds for one more year um, so it's living in the credit world and it's living in the proficiency world and so uh, so we got one more year and then we're going to revamp it a little bit more and, uh, and really try to outline the pathways that you can take uh, much better so that kids can see that through path on their proficiency system. The, um, the SLOs are listed on pages one and two. Yes. They don't have the number. I was just going to say know. that. We realized that when we printed them. So you just have to count something. down. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was that was one of the first catches. We're like, uh, we numbered them, but didn't have them numbered. Yeah. Growing pains. Cool. So the class of 2019, the class of 2019 is the last class. Yes. To graduate. The class of 2019 will be the last class to graduate under the credit-based system. And if you look through it and you have questions, can we keep it? You can keep a copy if you'd like. Um, but it's not, and we put it in the pile for our kids or parents or anybody else to have it. And it is available electronically on the website if you want to see it there as well. Thank you for that. Nothing else? Finance Committee. There's a report in here. I'm just looking at it. Budget passed. Yeah. <laughs> work, the work's done. My question is, why are there 783 or whatever it is people that always vote the budget down? Is it on principle? Mm. Is it that they don't want to pay taxes? Is it they don't have kids in the school? I mean, that's a yes. huge, that's a lot of <laughs> Look at you like you knew the answer. It is a lot. Say, no. <laughs> Most of them are those I would have liked. I know. Yeah. Yeah. Which, just, which time? It's actually all the time. But if you look at the U32, it was 1,100 and something to 780 and something. So, so, so we don't know. So can I actually, except for one year, that margin's almost been the same, plus or minus. 50 votes. Yeah, no, I know that. So but I where, just, where the margin's been about the same. I think until this is a good, it's a really good question for the communications piece. Scott and, and Karen and I had a good conversation for the, form, for the school start time about ways communication can be gathered. Um, and that's, I think that's one of those, to answer that question is not going to be done in a board meeting. It's going to be done on some focus forums and some ways of bringing people together. And you know, who are, is it, how safe do people feel in our communities to say they voted no? And I don't know the answer to that. I don't want to presume I know it. But there needs to be safe ways for that information to be gathered. And even in an open meeting, it's not a safe way for people to do that. Yeah. And there should be ways to do that. <coughs> and if I. I look forward to continuing our discussion from yesterday because I think there are some possibilities. That, um, but that will. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it just, you know, it's just, that's a lot of people. Mm -hmm. But that, that, that really hasn't changed. And it hasn't, but it, that doesn't make it 
Okay. We don't understand yeah. it. Right. Right. And that's what, you know, I think that's what you're talking about. Yes. Yes. Yeah. 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 I mean, what's, how do we, is that it strict, how do we is address it? Is it strictly a money yeah. issue? Well, what is it a vote against? Yeah. Yeah. It's probably, it's not necessarily a vote against U32, right? It's it a vote against it's, taxes. It could be a or, vote against taxes. Yeah. It could be a vote yeah. against, you know, the If the kid yeah. lives up the street, and, you know, keeps scaring my cows. I mean, you don't, yeah. you don't know that. You know? Yeah. The school start time committee subcommittee. You gave us a little bit. Do you have more? Um, I can go on for more detail. Um, but no. Um, what we decided was that really all the issues that come up about reasons not to change school start time, which of course our goal is really just thinking by 30 minutes, but is also to question in the forum with with more public input concerns and how those could be addressed, whether it's needing an older sibling to take care of younger kids or transportation issues, uh, commingling of students if the tra transportation was changed. So kind of go over all of that, but also the first forum just sort of on the, the science, the brain science and why later start times for older kids is important. So um, really the best thing I think we did was come up with the timeline on how we can do this and come back with a full report. Thanks. Questions? Public forum on March 26th. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, the second, as soon as we have that one, publicizing the second one. So we have a cute flyer. It can be posted everywhere. Yeah, we're going to get that out. Yeah. They're, they're both going to be here? Or? Yes. Yeah. Right here. OK. Thank you. That's a lot of work you guys are doing. Policy committee. Scheduled to meet next week, but it sounds as though, oh, well, you guys can meet without me, but I, I won't be there. <laughs> so the next one is scheduled for next Monday. The last time it was, or the previous meeting was canceled. Yeah. So uh, it has a couple been. topics on that are, um, one of the things that I'm looking for, and part of it is because I'm in a doctoral program, is I think that the, all the districts should come together and talk about how, um, how we make judgment about research being conducted within our own schools. I'm not saying we shouldn't or we should, but I think we should have a process. And there are a few school districts in Vermont that do. When an educational institution approaches, we, I get them a lot, actually. Um, and it's from, from one of our teachers asking Stephen and I, and I said, I think we take care of this now, but I think about, I won't do my, my doctoral research in our schools, um, but I, I think there's sometimes that institutions push uh, teachers to do that when they're working on their master's or their doctorate, and there's pros and cons, and those should be looked at. We don't need a full-fledged IRB. Their institutions will take care of that to make sure it's safe. Um, but there are pros and cons to be weighed on that, and that should I think there should be a group doing that. And that's one of the things that the policy committee tasked me with bringing a sample policy. <coughs> And just let me know if you can't get there for some reason, whatever it is. Action agenda. No leave of requests. Sorry, leave of absence requests. No year-end resignations. No year-end retirements since last Wednesday. A one problem anything in the last day. <laughs> um, I've been here. Right. <laughs> and we did vote on the resolution. So we are down to the board orders. Is there a motion to approve the board orders? So moved. Okay. And a second? Uh, second. Do they, do they have four signatures at least? Are there questions on the board orders? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Do you need to know the amount, Lisa? Do I usually? I can't remember. You yes. do sometimes. Do. Okay. 141986 dollars and 72 cents. Future agenda items, board communication. <coughs> Stephen, you were going to give me some inf information about the implementation plan so I could write a board newsletter for April. Do you remember that? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I do. When I get an email from Jody, I'm going to say, Stephen, where is that? <laughs> you got a couple weeks, Stephen. <laughs> There's a lot shorter distance between them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
Well, it's the board column. I thought yeah. <laughs> he's good. <laughs> he's good. <laughs> I can change it a little bit and give them my own name. Um, front Porch Forum. I think it's my turn to write that, unless someone else wants to take a stab at it. Just Where are we stabbing it? Flyer the, out there. What? Flyer out there. Yeah, the, our flyer needs to go. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're, Krista and I are planning to do that next week and the week after from the next year. It doesn't mean you can't come. So okay. well, can you write a front porch forum thing that sure. attaches that to it and then the, send the, it to us? Basically about that? Okay. Yeah, just, yeah. yeah just that would be perfect. Web, okay. Page. Um, and we you need to add our articles. Corinne noticed that. He emailed us. I just emailed Krista. Okay. And those mm -hmm. videos are going to get up there. So yes. Those yeah. talks. Okay. And maybe a thank you for supporting the budget and you might mention that right. resolution. the resolution. Yeah. Okay. Great. Do you want to write all that or do you I want will. me to write that part? I'll write it and then I'll float it by you. Okay. okay. That sounds great. Thank you very much. And then you're off the hook for a while. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, so are we all set on everything else? So, a motion to go into executive session for a student matter. Can I just have one thing? Yes. Some of the board um, communication. Someone had asked me about the our contract with the, the dam folks, and that wasn't very elegant, elegantly said. No. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, we all we all know what you were talking about. Well, yeah, I mean, it was clear that way, but it didn't sound right. <laughs> But um, so I just had a question. Someone asked me about that and said I would ask about yeah. that. So. Have we sorted all that out? Um, I, I can tell you what I've said. Yeah, yeah you kind of had it in your email, so I didn't go any further than that. Here's what I said. I was asked, I was asked on the floor yesterday, and I said I don't have a comprehensive understanding, but I do know that when Robbie Porter asked for a renewal, he was looking for a 20 year deal. And because of the term of that, we wanted to do a full review and really understand our options. So the plan was to put together a request for proposals to understand, you know, do we do hydro, do we do solar, do we do, what's the best or rate? metering or um, outside. And given all of the other things that we had going last year, we were not able to get a request for proposals out in um, to meet Robbie's timeline. And I think that's unfortunate. He was a good partner for five years, but that's what it was. He went and, and secured another contract. Um, so the plan still is to do a request for proposals. Um, yeah, I'll say I was pretty direct with Robbie. He wanted a direct renewal, and I said I wasn't willing as superintendent to re recommend that, and especially for a 20 year term. And I said, I'd be glad to go out to bid. Um, and there were no options like temporary one year renewal to buy time or anything like that mm -hmm. offered, right? Um, there, I would say I was willing to talk about a five year. He wasn't. Okay. Said, okay. I, I mean, I, I would actually told that, tell you that, but we've been advised be through the uh, Vermont through the energy, school energy folks, which I should remember the name because it's part of my superintendents were the ones to sponsor it, um, that they suggest not going out for more than five years on an energy deal because of the fluctuating utility rates, yeah. that you could actually hamstring the school district by quite a bit. Um, unless you're gonna own, the, you know, you're gonna put your own solar, right? <laughs> or you're gonna put your own panels. But, you know, you're gonna lease them, you're gonna have them on your site. But if you're gonna do a net metering, Long term is not an advantageous place for any organization to be in because of changing the utility rates. And, and options. options, absolutely. Five years, more than five years does, seems Doesn't seem problematic. Yeah. Does that help? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Nice so help. I know that um, before Matt Colva uh, moved back down to Massachusetts, we were right on that RFP timeline to get something out this spring. Steve and I have had a couple of conversations. Trying to get We're it out. Get it out. Yeah. Uh, there's a couple of different things. We're looking for many different options. We're not looking <coughs> to one alternative energy. I would also let you know, and I think Stevens let you know this, um, we've reduced our energy quite a bit just by doing energy conservation mm -hmm. within the building. It's great. But changing the LED lights and things like that. Yeah. So. It's good. 
Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so I'll entertain a motion to go into executive session. So moved. Karen and second. 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 Carl. And we need to give these guys a couple minutes to um, move out. And Shannon, thank you very much.